Hey guys, welcome back to Gerbil Space Program! My name is Twitchy, and last time we wowed the world with a transforming plane. Kicked off the station profiles by docking two craft together, and of course, caused controversy in the comments by sending Jeb out of the Kerbin system forever. This time, Manula Orbit, Satellite Repair, and we send our first station up into Kerbin Orbit. My name is Twitchy, and welcome to my final career. Today, Gene Kerman has a lucrative and interesting contract for us. Out around the orbit of the Mun, there is a satellite sitting out there, and it needs a radiator panel attached to it. Thanks to the wondrous new powers that the engineers have been able to put little pieces of uh, little parts, shall we say, onto and off of vessels, uh, I, I think this is something that we can do. Also, Squad have now just given us a relay satellite around the Mun. Just just because we've put this uh, this this contract into effect, it's it's got a bunch of technology that I just do not have access to. Maybe I didn't I'm not gonna do that this mission, but maybe at some point in the future we can swing past and grab some of that technology using the same powers of the engineer and just kind of run away with it. Okay, so we need to go to the moon and we know that we need to take three people well we don't need to take three people with us. We need to take at least the engineer and that to me screams that we need to take three people with us. We need a pilot to fly us out there we need the engineer to do the actual mission and I mean it, we can't we can't leave the scientist out I'm sure there's some numbers that they can write down maybe make a graph or two I, you know what scientists do in the background we have gone with the classic mix of the P round spherical pod and the mark 1 capsule on top this gives us a crew capacity of three pilot up top and the engineer and scientist in the bottom I'm not sure whether we're gonna be sending Valentina on co or a new team here but we'll have to figure that out I have just discovered a bit of a bug though a bug that I've uh, horrified to discover that we can put super massive parts inside the capsule to the point of uh, weighing things down incredibly shortly after this stream was recorded where there was a reddit user who was showing this bug to walk kerbals across the bottom of the ocean uh, that was pretty awesome be interesting to see what else people can do with this before squad patches it out i'm sure there's going to be some horrific stuff going on back to the mission at hand we've kind of standardized the top spaceship nowadays we've got terrier engine underneath and the three fuel tanks around the outside giving us a nice low profile and a wide base to land on if we ever need to of course this mission is not landing Let's throw down some two meter wide fuel tanks underneath to accommodate the skipper and some um, one meter wide to put down some swivel engines as a boosters we need a new team though i think it's time that we started training up some others we've got jess moore as a pilot obviously but i'd also like to welcome ten cow the scientist and anemone the engineer it's a phrase i can't say very well there was a little bit of concern that maybe he wouldn't be able to move the parts around but the quick test on the launch pad confirms that he does have the abilities and three two one lift off I wish I could say this craft leapt to the skies like the most agile of birds, but no, it leapt to the skies like a pigeon that had found the dominoes bin that had gorged itself so full that its wings could barely carry its bulky weight up into the atmosphere. We're just about clearing 1G of acceleration, meaning we can just about overcome 1G of downward acceleration, which is the downward acceleration that Kerbin possesses, if you didn't know that. I'm hoping that rather soon we get to unlock the main cell, but unfortunately it is behind upgrading our research and development building which is a very expensive building it's probably the most expensive building to upgrade definitely the thing we will be aiming for next though in the background I am starting to set up some maneuver nodes to head to the moon but after having a quick check at our trajectory and the orbit of the target vessel I realized that we're coming in on the wrong side of the moon so I need to lift my projected Apple apps up just enough so that when the moon finally catches up with my projected orbit we will be on the other side of the moon meaning that we can go into the orbit the other way way around. Planning that maneuver node, probably the most technical part of this episode, at least so far, because there is one more technical bit coming up. Uh, burning through the projected maneuver has put me exactly where I wanted to be, and of course then planning another maneuver to capture once we have got there. If you were paying very close attention, you would have seen Jebediah just leaving the moon's sphere of influence. You can see his uh, hyperbolic orbit out in the background there. Every now and then it just, uh, it just comes into the side of the screen. Good to know where he is. He's a couple of days out of leaving and this mission ends up taking 
four or five days. In fact, let's take a moment and have a look up here. Uh, you can see I was making an alarm to make sure that we didn't miss Jeb leaving the system, but it ha very handily shows us four days. I mean, the, the Kerbin day is only six hours long, so we can safely call it five days until he's uh, leaving the system. That gives us plenty of time to go around and make sure that we get a very, very close encounter with this defunct satellite over here. Our mission, of course, is to deliver a radiator panel, and we have finally made a very nice and swift rendezvous. Most of the work being done on our capture orbit there. I did some nice little maneuver node stuff to make sure it was working fine. Trying to come in as slow and as low angle as possible because we do not have any RTS and then that's fine. I can navigate with the rocket engine but of course as we're flying towards it the rocket engine needs to be fired and the thing with rocket engines is they move the other craft. So I've got to get my engineer out. An enemy is out and doing his stuff. The first thing I'm going to do is grab the, the radiator off and try and put it in my inventory. That does not work so I'm going to go and put it straight on to the satellite. I thankfully have the reach that we needed. Panic over. Okay, I think we're good. That, I mean, the reach there was crazy. How far How far can these guys put stuff away? That's, that's a real question there. 350,000 roots in the company bank account. I'm loving that. It's time to take a moment and just appreciate the beauty of the situation in front of us here. We've got a rotating spaceship. We've got a drifting satellite. We've got Kerbin in the distance and the moon drifting out of view. It is a beautiful thing. We've got to just take a moment and realize that Kerbal is full of wonderful, wonderful views. I do have a little bit of a question about that. Obviously, there are visual mods out there and for the first viewing of almost all the planets, I'm going to make sure they are stocked. But do we want to have things like clouds on Kerbin. I quite like clouds on Kerbin. I was wondering if you guys agree. Anyway, we were on the wrong side of the moon to be able to escape straight away, so we time warped round to the other side, and just with a little bit of a thrust out, we are going backwards from the moon in a retrograde direction from the moon's orbit, if you will, and that means that we are slowing down. Of course, whilst we're landing on the moon, we have the same orbital velocity as the moon, um, and we need to remove that before we can come down to Kerbin. Another moment for a beautiful view this time I am keeping hold of the fuel tanks as we go through the atmosphere. I want to slow down as fast as possible and I'm on hoping that the wide base, the real flat cross-sectional area that we're going to approach the atmosphere with uh, is going to do us a good and slow us down nice and fast. I don't know how that's going to work out though. Blank screen, just the nearest hint of a vision of what is going on. And then the fires of the atmosphere. Explosions all around. Everybody worries. We've lost our cross-sectional area. What is going to happen from this point forward? I'm going to just bring up a little bit of alpha here. Yes, that's right. We are leaving the atmosphere again. Beautiful skybox, by the way. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that to people once or twice or maybe once or twice an episode. I don't know. But it's looking really good uh, back there. Quick check on the instrument and let's bring down those levels again just so we don't blind ourselves when we have the glories of a sunrise. Oh, that, that's, that's nice. But anyway, we need to actually bring ourselves back down and into the atmosphere for good, properly. And let's do it finally this time. If you're wondering what the red line on the map is, you have just seen it and you're probably about to see it again in a very short time. That is the trajectories mod telling us roughly where we are going to land. It, go it shows us our path through the atmosphere and also a red X on the floor for where we're going to land. And it was taunting us, telling us that we were very close to the desert launch site, but we had no fuel, so we just had to go ballistically through the atmosphere. The view of the crew here is absolutely stunning. I think one of the best features they ever gave to Kerbal Space Program is giving you that little button down by the astronauts portrait that allows the side of the capsule to be transparent. It's great. I love it. I, it's one of the, as I say, one of the best features. There's a different type of terror to be reached going through the atmosphere than it is landing on the airless surface of a planet. In here, it is just a gradual builder's terror. As you realize the walls around you are glowing in heat and maybe, just maybe, if you pushed it a little too hard, you'd pop a hole in that little surface and fry in all the plasma around us. Anyway, bringing back up the uh, the alpha boost here. It's a little bit dark in the actual game, so we're just going to go ahead and let us see what we could not see at the time. It's a good parachute deployment, and we're just going to race through the hole, uh, dropping down to the surface, to the water, in fact. It's a great mission. Made us millionaires, and with this amount of money comes other concerns. We need to start spreading our vision further afield, and to that end, we're going to put down some planetary transfer alarms. I want to go to E 
leave and I want to go to Juno. Well, actually, I want to go to their moons. 200 days to prepare. Well, 150 days for both of them to prepare. I think that's an easy enough target to meet. Anyway, should we go check on Jeb? He's been out in the wilds for a little while now and uh, maybe maybe starting to go a little bit stir crazy. No, no, he's he's looking fine. Still quite a way off of being able to leave a Kerbin, but throwing out a maneuver node just to see if there's anywhere we can hit. Uh, Juna is not in path. That That's that's very much unfortunate. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see if there's anywhere else. Maybe check on the other side of the orb. It. Having the honour of being the person everybody wants to send far, far away. We're going to see if Jeb can actually swing by other targets on the way. He might he might as well go and see some stuff. I do have some long-term plans for Jeb. Maybe we will be able to get him to swing by some sort of engineer. Maybe together they can pirate their way up to a better craft. I don't know, just, just thoughts and uh, ideas at the moment. We're just going to take a moment here between missions to uh, catch our breath. <sighs> yeah. Did you know I've uh, released a much slower video? Just chilling in orbit for an hour. All right, let's get back to it. At this point, I'm a little bit miffed. Last time, we spent most of the episode trying to dog our two craft together so that we can meet all the requirements for all the station building contracts. But unfortunately, it seems that I am missing some of the prerequisites. Thankfully, I've got a contract configurer installed, and this allow me, allows me to go in and have a look and see what I'm missing. And it turns out the thing that I'm missing is the hitchhiker canister. No problem, into the R&D. I've got some extra science to spend, so we're gonna quickly buy that one piece there and back over to the mission control. Yes, indeed, and now we have the ability to build the first Kerbin-based space station. Of course, the largest concern when trying to design your space station is gonna be what do you actually want to put on it? Now, we're gonna have a whole bunch of requirements from the contract, but honestly, these are the minimum requirements that I would put onto a space station anyway. The ability to control itself and some room for Kerbals, stuff like that. It's all fairly reasonable and what, I, as I say, would put on a station anyway. I want this first station of ours to be both a staging area for our tourists and a fuel repository when we need to a top up craft that just happens to a swing by and I don't know maybe I didn't have the most efficient launch possible that happens quite often I'm sure you are aware when I first built this craft people were complaining about the shape a little too suggestive they said so okay I, I, I went through and did a few other designs trying to avoid the, uh, the obvious long cylindrical shapes I do like the form factor that we've arrived at here. Even put a few fireworks up on top. Completely forgot about those when we actually came around to using them. And particularly when I copied out that section, that docking section up top and put it down on the bottom. Right now, I'm trying to figure out how this thing will fly. We, of course, want it to make its own way up into orbit. It is, of course, carrying quite a lot of fuel, so it'd be nice to make use of that. Uh, going through and putting some of those, uh, finally, thud uh, engines on the side, uh, we can see that we've got ourselves about... 4,000 Delta V, which is which is actually an incredibly big number. That was a lot more Delta V than I was expecting to see there. Unfortunately, the two thud engines alone are lacking the to weight ratio to even be able to lift this thing off the floor. So we do need to have a orbital booster underneath. Gone for three two meter and uh, two meter tanks underneath. Put a skipper underneath, and then realised that that wasn't enough to actually lift it up even still. So we put more skipper engines around the bottom with these uh, small little tanks. They're really just there to provide an like, anchor point for the skipper. Uh, I'm loving the look of this craft right now. I've gone through, done a few tweaks, taken some fuel out of the top so that we've got a little bit more lift capabilities in the booster below. Going with my standard naming convention, Station Core Curvin Alpha. If you've got a better name, let me know. Uh, and loading this into the flight mode, you can see you see already there might be a bit of a problem. If you've played Kerbal Space Program before, you might know that I've gone and done a major design mistake here. That's right, I've gone and put a thin docking port on top of a wide decoupler. This is a very unstable situation to find myself in. I'm very impressed with the node's abilities to hold on, despite all these mechanical strains that are happening right now. If this happened to a real life rocket, it just snaps in half. You know, there, there's no way that anything could deal with that. Best launch, great launch. It was an amazing launch. It was a perfect uh, learning experience. It's not something that to be afraid of, especially in Kerbal. It, it happens, you fail, you come back, you fix some things and you start again. And the easy fix here is to put some struts down. Of course, I'm using two meter tanks. I'm trying to attach to a two meter tank. That means I can't even get past the decoupler because that's just a little bit wider. The easy fix for that, of course, some structural parts, just bring them in a little bit there, make it all nice and tidy. But that's, that stabilizes us in one direction. I want to stabilize in the other. Uh, you will 
will note that I uh, started off by attaching it to the station and then down to the booster. I didn't want that at all because that would leave tiny little nodules on my station. So I uh, picked it up and did it the other way around. Okay, proper launch this time. Three, two, one, blast off. All right, brilliant. We are up and away. One thing you might notice straight away, we do not have any Kerbals on board. Another thing you might notice straight away is the drag on this craft is ridiculous. Turning on the drag overlay, the two little arms that were sticking out were desperately trying to turn this craft over but because we had four engines on the bottom we had all the control we needed to keep us facing forward the booster having done its job we are now going to cast it aside and we are going to move our way on up to apple apps we're going to use the fuel and the two thud engines on this space station to bring us into a perfectly circular orbit i was aiming for 100 kilometers i ended up roughly at 100 kilometers uh, 107 on peri apps and 117 on apple apps if i remember my numbers correctly i, I don't know exactly what i will see in a moment but the boost is going on well i'm getting a little bit worried by how little fuel there appears to be in my fuel tank but actually we've stopped and we've got uh, plenty to go around i forgot to set this as a station so the contract did not recognize me that's fine uh, thankfully i didn't have to do it before we launched there are a few contracts that do need that but uh worked out all right you may remember that we stated one of the main reasons for the space station was as a staging area for our tourists. And to that end, we need a new tourist trap. One that can do more than just suborbital. This one needs to take us and our clients up to orbit and deliver us to our space station. This shouldn't be too hard, though. I do seem to have completely forgot the lesson about the fact that the fuel does not flow through the heat shield. So we are going to have to try and figure out a new way of doing that. Of course, all that means is we just move the fuel tank down below the heat shield and keep it with the engine. Now, this is... It's quite a minimal uh, rocket here, uh, especially when we go ahead and put the thumper boosters on this. It makes this rocket very, very streamlined. Just a handful of fuel tanks, a swivel engine down the bottom, the three thumper boosters, and we are ready to go. We've got ourselves a tourist here, and we're getting a Jessmore out for some orbital fun. Right now, waiting for the station to be in the right position. That is just below the desert, and once it's reached, we are away. So fast, I didn't even have time for a countdown. Jessmore headed to the station so she can drop off Julie. Lou Kerman here to her new residence for maybe a day. I don't know how long we're going to leave it up, leave her up here. But as a test of technology demonstration, we are going to leave her, bring Jessmore back, and then send another mission up to come and get Jessmore. I waited just a little bit too long. It turns out to uh, rendezvous nicely with the station, so I'm going to have to try and make sure that my orbit is slightly lower than the station so that we can catch up. Uh, one thing I do know, uh, do do, is use the very last of the fuel in the booster to bring it periaps down below the atmosphere so they all burn up in the atmosphere right so we now need to use the spacecraft to rendezvous with the station not an overly difficult prospect given that we uh, were very very close when we launched and we uh, have uh, room to have a lower orbit so we can catch up with the station nice and easy especially with the aid of maneuver nodes helping us get down to the fine details well actually now if i'm to be honest with you the maneuver nodes get us nice and close and then you've got to kind of look on the map view uh looking at the intersect nodes those orange little triangles and and try and get them as close as possible that way right we have got into a visual range of the station that means the rules are changed we need to now switch to the nav ball and try and keep the yellow circle and the pink circle on top of each other so that we can drift towards our target my main target is actually the docking port at the bottom of the station there and uh, once I get close enough to be able to see that docking port as opposed to the station I switch to locked camera mode so that we can fly just by the seat of my pants I find locked camera to actually be the most intuitive when you're trying to figure out what your state what your spacecraft is doing in orbit uh, it, it just helps immensely uh, we did a quick transfer of Julu and Jessmore is coming home just really quick and nice uh, doing this as a quick test to see how much fuel gets used on the way back but I always seem to be leaving at the desert I'm fairly sure if I try to deorbit my vehicle much more before the desert uh, we'd be coming back with a much less Delta V cost going in sideways as it is the way that presents the largest cross-sectional area and gives us the largest drag coming through. Of course at some point you've just got to recognize that it's going to get hot and toasty so point your heat shield back towards the mainstream of there and then coming down underneath the parachutes. I've opened these, asked these parachutes to open nice and low as you see less than a kilometer there. Uh, just keeping an eye out with what, seeing what's going on. Everything is nice and safe. I think this is a great technology a demonstration. Turning out that the, uh, the 
ground crew there cannot put the rocket square on the launch pad. Last one was far off to the left, and this one seems to be closer to the VAB. Oh well, as Valentina is making her way up to the station, I would like to take a moment here and thank every single one of my patrons out there. These are the guys and girls that are keeping me focused and disciplined when things come up. Sometimes my friends will turn around to me and go, hey, Twitchy, do you want to be launched by a homemade trebuchet into an Olympic-sized swimming pool filled with ice cream, custard, and jelly? And I'll be like, no, my friends, I can't. I must keep focused. I have these people expecting entertainment. Entertainment from me, the king of entertainment. So I hope you will join me in saying thank you to these people for making sure that this and other series and servers and all sorts of stuff that we do in the background is possible. Whilst we've been thanking these absolute pinnacles of humanity, in the background, Valentina Kerman has been approaching the station. The rendezvous went very well, and I waited for sunrise so that we could watch this little manoeuvre take place. Once again, docking solely under the power of the engine on the back. Just got to use the uh, the locked camera mode to get your relative position. And, and uh, Seriously, locked camera mode. You can do all sorts of docking just, just via that. You uh, look where you want to go, you thrust, you go back. But anyway, we have picked up our tourists, and via the ancient method of spinning around in a circle and letting go of the docking node we have separated throwing myself in the wrong direction I actually threw the spacecraft forwards and the station backwards but if we carried on doing that hundreds and thousands of times we could probably actually deorbit the space station coming back towards the Kerbal Space Center we've actually managed to nail the trajectories pretty well there beautiful sunrise as the plasma heating kicks in uh, because of the trajectories mod I happen to know that I'm going to slightly overshoot my target so we'll see if I can use the flat body of the bottom of this craft to kind of slow us down. And then I'm wondering whether we can use the drag and maybe even a bit of a lift profile to fly us in there. Unfortunately, my parachutes pop. I've got to remember... To, well, I, honestly, this is a bit of a safety feature. I was about to say I've got to remember not to set them off like this. But quite often, I forget to pop the parachutes and we end up crashing into the surface of the water too hard because they didn't deploy. So I, I'd rather have the safety margin. But like we, we totally could have flown to the KSC if the, like maybe this had a lifting body or a wing on it or something like that. But with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have done a wonders. We went out and we explored the new engineer's construction tools. We got ourselves a space station for our tourists, so we're going to definitely explore upon that. Next time, we need to go check on Jeb. He's out in the middle of nowhere. Maybe we'll get that dealt with, and we will uh, find some more of these engineer's hidden wonders that are new to Kerbal 1.12. But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!